This is Code.org. I'm currently working on CS Principles, Unit 5, Building Apps, Lesson 17, Building an App, Canvas Painter, Puzzle 13. Okay, so we already have a bunch of code here and some functionality. We can draw a bit, we can delete a bit, we can delete with random. All right, if you don't have that stuff, you need to go back, make sure you do the other parts of this uh, lesson. If you get stuck, I have videos on them. Now, let's redraw random part two. All right, we're gonna program out this, I think. Now we're ready to rewrite the code for our random effect. To do this, we will be clearing the canvas, which we got done already, and processing the array. Uh, the array event list to redraw all the dots with a random radius, right? You already set up the clear canvas, so next we'll need to process our array in order to find out the event information for each dot. You'll need to create a for loop that iterates through every index in event list. Recall the length command. Within your loop, you will be drawing dots referencing items stored. You will be drawing dots referencing items stored in the array. So the dots are going to reference the items. I'll show you what they mean. As you write this code, remember that you can treat individual elements of an array exactly like the kind of data it stores. Ah. All right, inside a for loop, the event at index i can be accessed with the notation event list i. So we can get the specific event using this index, right? Using i uh, and using that, calling up the index in the array of that. Then we can ask for a property of event, of the event stored there by using dot notation. I'll show you what I mean, but it will look like this, event list i dot offset. So let's say i is equal to 2 at in our array event list, right? The event at index 2, so that would be the second circle we drew. No, it would be the third because uh, indexing starts at 0. But regardless, the event at index 2 is going to return the dot offset x property. So that would be the x location of the event at index 2, which would mean our mouse's location when we drew that dot on the screen at index, uh, when we drew that dot at the screen, we're going to get the X and Y location, then we just redraw the dot. So it sounds more confusing than it is, but let's, we're going to give it a shot. Do this. Inside the random button event handler, add a for loop that runs I from 0 up to event list length. Yes, so that will get the length of our array. So let's do show blocks. Let's do a for loop in our random function. Oh, not a function. That's a control for loop. And we'll, we want to clear the canvas likely first, and then we're going to draw, right? So we don't want to have a messy canvas before we start drawing. And the length of I is going to be our event list length, event list dot length. And keep in mind, event list is a global variable. We declared it up here outside of all these functions, so any of our functions can access it, can change it, can use it. Dot length will return the length. The reason this works is if if we have five things in our array, dot length returns a five. Well, think about it. We only have four indexes in our array, though. We, well, we have five indexes, but we start at zero. So the first index in our array is zero. The second index is one. The third index is two. The fourth index is three. And the fifth index is five. So since i starts at zero, we'll actually get through all five. Let's test it out. We're going to need our circle command. And what do we need? Ooh, okay, so we're gonna set set the radius parameter to some random number. Okay, and then, oh right, we wanna use our event list i, because we're gonna access every single circle we drew before, and then we're gonna get their x, or their offset x, which is the x location of the mouse, and then we're going to use event list 
uh, I again, right? Because it's the same event we want to grab. And then we're going to grab its offset Y. And then we're going to use math random number for the radius, it looks like. So we're going to grab the event at index I and get its X location and its Y location. And then we're going to redraw it with a radius of, and we can kind of pick our random number. I'm thinking, though, we'll do, if we did 5 before, I'm going to say 2 to 12. Let's give that a shot, and let's see what this does. Let's reset, run. So I'm going to hold shift, and to trigger um, random, I'm going to click on it now. I let go of shift. Ta-da! And if you want to be sure it's working, we could do something like... Ta-da! <laughs> it's kind of fun. Test your program, hit the randomize button. Yep, we got it. So it's a bit tricky, especially with iterating through an array to access properties in that array. But all we're doing is we're grabbing the length of event list. We're starting at zero, and then we grab the index, right? So our first index, which is zero, we get that event, we redraw it, we hit the bottom of our for loop, we go back to the top, I++ plus plus adds one to our I, so now instead of being at zero, we're at one, drop down, we get that at index one, and we keep going. And if we had a length of five, right, so say our array is five long, when we hit, so I just runs for four, hits the bottom, goes back to the top, I++ plus plus is five, now our loop's over and it drops down, and continues to run code underneath if there was any. That's when we would end. And it already hit everything though because our index started at zero. So it doesn't need to run that final time. All right, let's uh, keep going. I'm excited to see what other functionality we add to this.